a while since we broke out of this game. Just a wee bit. Yeah, because someone's not available for it. Ever. Me? It's me. I've been really busy the last month. Also that vacation. I just don't have time for you anymore. Anyway. I was there at vacation. <laughs> I, I, I met you as in you and game. Maybe. Who knows. Anyway, this is Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. I'm Shikwaza. I'm Waifu. We're in the trial. So maybe we'll finish case four today. I don't know. I really hoped it, so. I don't remember what we were doing. Uh... Oh god. Okay. Wherever the man purchases musty tones, it must it makes no difference in the final analysis. As I suspected, you can't fool me. Mr. Naruto, we mustn't give up. What do you mean? If the prosecution's assertion is correct, the members of the jury may very well decide. Consider the assertion just put forward by the prosecution very, very carefully. They claim Sasuke-san must have passed the location of the incident on his way from, uh, your books, but it's possible that he did. Holy shit, we have, like, no evidence. Mm -hmm. We're probably not very far at all. Mm -mm. So, he could have gone this way. Like, mm -hmm. we know the door is at least on this side. Um, yeah, like, it seems like it, he could have gone either way. We're probably gonna be wrong, but I'd, I'd like to at least try to attempt that. Mm -hmm. The assertion just made by the pr prosecution is fundamentally flawed. That did you say? Explain yourself, counsel. Um, yes, my lord. Uh, you, you can see what I mean on, the, on this map. When returning from your books to his lodgings, Mr. Natsume could have followed this route suggested by the prose prosecution. However, that isn't the only conceivable route to take between the two places. They're gonna be like, ah, Kalabash Road was closed. If the defendant used these streets, look what happens. He arrives back at his lodgings without passing the location where the victim was attacked. Objection. Talking back to a clown is a fool's errand, of course. However, I feel compelled to point out that my finger needs a sucky sack, bitch. That route is what is commonly referred to as the long way around. Huh? On a cold winter's night, why would any man choose to take the longer route home? It's not that longer. The answer is extremely simple. He wouldn't. In other words, the Q's took the obvious route to back to his lodgings and is the obvious perpetrator of this crime. But, 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 aha, yes, I've got it. Obviously, we must ask the man himself. Ask Mr. Natsume which route he took home. He's gonna be like, yeah, I took the Briar Road route. They have already informed the court of the accuser's response to such questioning. He claims he has no recollection. Well, shit. As I, as I said, the bloke seems to spend his time seems to spend his time for outside wandering aimlessly from A to B. That day was no exception. He says he doesn't remember where he was or which route he took home. That's I don't I don't believe this. I do. I don't know why I'm French now. Hey, thank you, my learned friend. And suggest that I thought he was always French. No, I am a vampire. Oh, yeah, that's right. I suggest that we do not waste any more of the court's time by wandering aimlessly around this subject. Pray, what say you, insightful jurors? But, but even if that is the case, the defense still... I agree with 
With the old band cheeks, I wholeheartedly and in every way. What? I don't believe it. it. Does does this mean? We members of the jury are completely convinced now. Very well. In that case, I hereby call upon all members of the jury to present your findings to the court. Guilty. 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 That's not the voice I would have expected from him. Well, fuck, we're fucked, fuck, 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 fuck. I would appear the jurors leading us unanimous. I call upon the fucking examination summation. It toasts to you. To the insightful members of the jury, I applaud your brave resolve. You serve queen and country admirably. Not like me. I drink people's blood in the dead of night. Bleh. Mr. Naruto. No. Not yet. This isn't over yet. I still have one last chance to sway the opinion of the jury. I'm gonna do it. I'll bitch I'll do it again. I have to tip the balance of those scales the other way. I have to turn this around. Somehow. Hmm, those are the eyes of a quarry not yet willing to give up and die. So I presume you intend to wield your rights again in this trial. Rights of the defense written into antiquated British law that should have been buried long ago. Well, too bad, because I got that law removed. Ha 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 ha. Well, call it antiquated if you w if you will, but it's still the defense's prerogative to carry out a summation examination if it so chooses. Very well, counsel. In accordance with the letter of the law, we shall proceed with a summation. Some summation. Exact. Someone should really change the name of this stupid thing. Are the members of the jury ready, Mr. Foreman? Of course, we're ready. I'm all too familiar with that neep and knees whippersnapper and his Ancus refusal to throw in his alley. Very well, then. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury. You will each explain on which grounds you have determined the defendant to be guilty. For pretty sake, that little neep knees oddity already admitted himself, didn't he? If he said that a woman in green collapsed before his eyes, why could it only have been the, been the victim? The man would have got, would have have gone around with the horses on his way back from the bookshop, not in winter. The poor woman was attacked from behind, was she? How dreadful! I really don't care. Can't we just wrap this up now? I've got work to be doing. Hmm. Your books, yes, I shop that, but bourbon books, hmm. No, not verse of visit. Only minor exceptions. The, for, the reason for fighting the defendant guilty are all too clear. When the stabbing occurred, the only two people at the scene were the victim and the accused. I've been doing too much of von karma. I want to add V's to all my W's. And the accused himself has admitted to seeing the victim in her green <laughs> overcoat sink to the ground before his eyes. Furthermore, we have heard from the inspector that the defendant has fl then fled the scene. I must say, oh my god, he's got a little ponytail. Do you see that? On the right side of his head? Oh my god, I do! He's got a cute little ponytail. <laughs> judge, I do have to uh, say something. Uh, judge, I love, I love your, your ponytail. <laughs> oh, thank you, counsel. It won't get you out of this, but uh, uh, your kind words have reached these kind ears. I, I guess, I don't know. I must say, I would have ample grounds to convince th to convict this man already. Oh dear, even the judge appears convinced of Mr. Natsume's guilt now. Ah, uh, why did he have to run away like that? How are we supposed to believe in some phantom attack that nobody could see? It was a ghost! This is impossible. How can I possibly make a case for the defense? Mr. Naruto, this is no time for grumbling. If we want to force the trial to continue... Yeah, I know. I have to turn the tide. 
Must make the jurors change their minds. Is this going to be another one where it fell out the window and then it hit the person? God, I hope not. Exactly. We have no choice but to forge onward. I said forward. Shit. You have the floor, Council. By begin your summation examination. Did Van Jeeks go sit in your timeout corner? Yes, my lord. He just turns to the corner, puts a dunce hat cap on. I hate this fucking law. Smackety smack smack. I just need to keep this trial going somehow. Whatever it takes. Come on, Ryanovsky. You can do it. Alright, so I don't see... Oh, hey. Uh, he's in the background. So we gotta... Could we press these guys? I guess say anything new. Hold it. Um, excuse me, but... Aren't you... Yes, that's right. I was in the witness stand myself just two days ago. Yes, I had a feeling I knew your face, or the side of it, anyway. Why do you only face towards the... Your right? I believe it has something to do with... Did your wife also slap you so hard it left a handprint? Uh... If I remember correctly, you're a banker, aren't you? That's right, I'm also the, uh, mastermind behind this whole game. I mean, uh, after this gold rush went down under, I came back to London to work. And it was all going swimmingly until you started f foss fossicking around. Bruce Fairplay was a man of repute. Sorry. I don't think I've forgotten how you treated me the other day. You had me and that young hatter pegged as criminals. I like the pegging part, but not the criminal part. Oh, well, you know... Water under, under the bridge. Now, there's all sorts of rumors buzzing around. All the police have been badgering me nonstop. I, if I could turn back the clock. Well, anyway, I don't know about the Hatter, but at least I'm in the clear now. And free to make up my own mind about who's guilty and who isn't. Can you fucking imagine the odds of having two witnesses from the trial we were just on being two of the six jurors? Like, come on. There were like, there were only like four witnesses. Literally half of them got to be, get to be jurors in this case. All right, maybe I might struggle to change this man's mind given our awkward history. Oh dear, I wonder what's become of Mr. First now. Uh, look to your right. He's right there. <laughs> He's right there, guys. I mean, his dress is way different, but anyway. You're right, at the time of the incident, the defendant admits, admits to having seen someone wearing a green overcoat walking ahead of him. Well, quite, that's precisely my point. Clearly that someone wearing green was the victim. And clearly that funny little Nipponese man with the disturbing mustache is the culprit. But let us not forget, madam, the defendant vehemently de denies attacking the woman. Why, of course he does. If he admits to stabbing her, his life is over. The man is obviously a liver-faced coward. Obvi uh, honestly, they probably had yellow-faced coward as the original text or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Claiming the a woman... Or maybe, maybe that is a phrase. Uh, it's never... Not one I've heard very often. Claiming the woman simply claps before his eyes? But if that's a lie as you're suggesting, do you not think he would have con concocted something more credible? Oh, I really couldn't say. After all, you are foreign. Who is to say what goes through your funny little minds? I could tell you what's going through my funny little mind right now, but you wouldn't like it. I do, de I do declare the man has made already made the admission. He himself has stated that there was nobody else around. Surely the conclusion is obvious. No one else could possibly have committed this awful crime. Uh. No one else could have done it. The accused must be the man. Really, it couldn't be more simple. Your argument is compelling in its simplicity, I must admit. Oh my, you are too kind, my lord. That went well for her.
I wonder if we're gonna press the final juror and he's gonna be like, ah, oh, I, I wish I could go to your books, but there's a terrible, like, fucking whatever. There was a card accident or something that I still haven't cleaned up from the other night. I don't know. But you can't deny that there are other routes that Mr. Natsume could have taken back from your books. Oh yes, that I could you on the map, you mean? What, what was it? Calabash Road or something? Precisely. But it seems to me that what counts is whether the little Japanese fellow actually went that way or not. Well, yes, that's true. At the moment, there's no proof that shows he did, is there? <clears throat> well, yes, that's true as well. And as I understand it, the accused himself doesn't remember which way he went, does he? Well, yeah, that's annoyingly true. Winter nights are dark and cold, so the way I see it, you'd want to get home as quickly as possible. Well, yeah, ah. Uh, why is all this true? So really, the only thing that makes sense is he went back home along Briar Road. I'm supposed to be convincing you here. I've given a lot of thought, you know. I didn't just make up my mind on a whim that he did it. I mean, if there was some logical reason why he might have gone the Calabash Road, it'd be different. I'd be happy to reconsider my position in that case. Honestly, I would. Mmm, 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 the reason why is so amount of Yeah, I'm just gonna press the last guy. Come on. Because you're probably not gonna have anything. You're probably not gonna have anything. Let's see. I'm sorry, fold it, you say? Fold what? My beard? No, no, what I said was hold it. What I wanted to ask was, do you visit your books often? I like the old books they have in there, yes, I enjoy reading them over a nice cup of old tea. Old tea, I made it yesterday, so it's old. That's my daily yes routine, you see. Same thing every day, including the day you're all talking about. And what time did you visit your books on the day in question? Are you, perhaps, the murderer? Well, I was picking up books in the after all afternoon, and it would have been just before five that I left. Well, wait a fucking second there. Ah, well, shit, I don't know the time of the... Oh, it was 5 p.m., wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we would have been... Ooh, okay. So he was actually in your books. That's my daily routine, you see. Same thing every day, including the day you're all talking about. So he's he shouldn't be a juror, then. He's a witness. <laughs> Just before 5, you say, exactly when the victim was attacked. Are you sure about the time? Oh, yes, yeah, no mistake there. I remember well. I'm not about to forget that day in a hurry. Not after the dreadful time I had. What do you mean? Well, I was walking down Calabash Road and I... Uh, what? Oh. That changes a lot of things, guys. Hmm. I was walking down Calabash Road when I slipped on the ice and dogged my head. Look at the color of his coat. Oh. He's a nice little round man, isn't he? It's always worse after the snow stops falling. That's when it's most slippery. Shut the fuck up, you dumb asshole. Wait a minute. <laughs> You're an idiot. That's right, I live in Corn Pipe, you see. Corn pipes where I live. Heading down Carl Bass Road is the quickest day for, way for me to get back from your book. God damn it, you guys are so fucking stupid. May very well be extremely significant. Herm, sorry, I'm not paying attention. Extremely sick. No, no, I'm quite all right now. I think juror number six needs to go to the hospital. If he's okay, then I'll put him there. But I can't help feeling that some of their opinions are rather subjective. I agree, it's the irrelevance of what some are saying that sends a shiver down my spine. Still, at least some of their assertions don't actually incriminate Mr. Natsume of anything. Mm -hmm. What do you plan? Animal Crossing? Or yes. Nintendo? Okay. We must use that to our advantage, Mr. Naruto. Cunningly. 
Yes, you're right. Let's listen to the jurors again carefully. And if any of their assertions are at odds, I'll pit them mercilessly against each other. I might need to press some other people about some things, but like... But like, come on, guys. I'll try this. Hold it. Nope. I'm ranked it, don't forget, an educated man. There's no contradiction as far as I can see. I agree now. Bitch. Bitch. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Why we save scum? Alright, you might have something. Hold it! How do I get so fucking lucky here? What is it, what's the matter, young man? You're the wife of Mr. Garadev, aren't you? The landlord who rents Mr. Natsume his room. Master's wife, where do you get your ideas, sir? I'm the maid, the maid, you understand? She's keeping up that charade. Ah, uh, this is going to be awkward. Um, why didn't you mention this yesterday? That you'd been selected for the jury in this trial, I mean. Well, I was told not to mention it to anyone until the day of the trial, you see. It was in the letter I received. The instructions were very clear. So I'm afraid I had no choice. I see. Anyway... Mr. Natsume, the defendant, takes lodging in your master's house, doesn't he? Yes, that's right. Although he's only been in over a little over a week now. In that time, surely you must have taken stock of his character. Slam! Does Mr. Natsume look like the kind of man who would commit a crime such as this? Yep. Oh my goodness me, yes, he's just a sword. What? Spending all his time in the dark and dingy room, sporting that unscrupulous mustache. I can't stand a man with a mustache. No. I just want to. I just want to rub her chubby cheeks. And then break her neck. I just. Oh, kinky. Man, the man never speaks. So don't get me started on those shifty eyes. All the neighbors are talking about him. That's neighbors with a U, you see. As in you, go and go fuck yourself. I heard them, you know. People think he must be building a bomb or there or something. You know why I can't say that in court? <laughs> Wait, is that a rule? I don't know. Maybe I'm mistaking that with... Uh, yeah, because the first case and... <coughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting that confused. The first case in Ace 25 heavily features bombs. Oh dear, poor Natsume. How can people say such things about him? He's just a harmless bookworm, nothing more. Well, you just called him a worm, so... It's a turn of phrase, Mr. Naruto. Anyway, I'd better be careful about inviting us maid to speak. She's said enough damning things already. Hold it! Oh wait, he's got a new statement. Juror number six. Don't get clever with me now, boy. My life's on the line, too, and so is my family's. How do you... I'm a colored man in, uh... <laughs> oh, boy. In Britain. Oh, boy. Let's not go there. <laughs> Likes of which you wouldn't understand, but a labor like me... Oh, boy. I don't like where this is going, man. Oh man, I wonder if there's a reason why this game took so long to come out in the, in the West. It's really fucking racist. If I don't work, I don't eat. And neither do the wife and kids. Don't you get paid if you go to jury duty? I don't know why people don't like jury duty. You get paid for like a full day's work, with a work. You could also work for a I had to take off work 
awesome. Like, the last time I went to court... No, no, no. Not not the last time I went to work. Because the last time I went to court was to get my name changed. Mm -hmm. Um, The other time I went to court for my car getting backed into... I was there for, like, 20 minutes. And then they came up to me and, like, Hey, you didn't actually see anything, right? And I was like, right. And they were like, okay, well... We'll send you your money. You're gonna get paid for the day you were out of work. Uh, you could just go. We might call in your your actual witness, but you, you're free to go. So I was like, cool, and I left. And I had the whole day off of work, and I got paid for it. It was kind of nice. I don't know if they. I don't know if they ever called in Melanie to talk about what she saw. I think they called her over the phone, but they didn't call her. Again. Yeah. Which is why I thought it was really weird that they called me in. Because I was like, I don't know. I didn't see anything. Didn't that neighbor freak the fuck out? Yeah, she freaked the fuck out on me. She was like, why did you call the police? I was like, because he fucking hit my car and ran away. That's a fun story. We, uh, <laughs> we, we were playing... We were literally playing uh, the Gen Ultimate uh, demo. And I was like, Scott, you probably should go home because I've got this whole deal going on. I managed to get him all the way home and back. And then the, the, the police showed up to take my statement. So, yeah, that was fun. That was a fun day, jeez. Mm -hmm. I think that was ultimately why I ended up selling that car. Because that was, it was a huge debt. The guy was... The guy was parked in their neighbor across the street's parking, mm -hmm. or, yeah. But he wasn't our neighbor. Like, he was just somebody that they knew. He parked, he, he backed out into the street, hit my car so hard it shook, according to Melanie, mm -hmm. and then he just fucking took off. And I was like, uh, what? Mm -hmm. I just don't remember who family member. I don't know. Yeah, and then, like, whatever days later, it was, like, I think it was probably the next time Scott came over, because I was, like, I, I was mad at you and Scott for not jumping in to help me. You guys just ran inside as soon as she came up to me. Yeah, she was bitching at me, and, like, you guys were watching, not doing anything. Ah, well. I'm sorry, we were scared. Don't be scared of old little white white ladies. You, you, you never get a chance to yell at them at work. If you get if the, if the chance to yell at them in, in your own fucking backyard arises, you take that opportunity. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. That must be very hard. I go to the union every morning. Oh, he's a union man. I like him. If I go to the union every morning to find out what he needs doing. If you're late and the work's taken, it's tough. Okay, so he's not, like, a laborer. But he's a laborer. This is 1904. Or whatever. This time of year, there's... Oh, God. Hmm. No, they they would have. Nah, don't worry about it. This time of year, there's water and gas and supply pipes bursting left, right, and center. They're after cheap labor to get the road dug up to fix it. It's hard slog from dawn till dusk it is. So you were out digging up the roads on the day of the incident as well, were you? Yep, that's right. I dug up Meersham Street. In fact, if I remember rightly, it was just around the corner from where it all happened. Dude. I, I, I like, appreciate the examination summation stuff, but, like, this case really feels like Juror 5 and 6 should have been witnesses rather mm -hmm. than on the jury. That's right. God damn it, you guys are fucking idiots! 
On the map, Mr. Naruto, there are three named streets. Cherry number five. You're an idiot. God damn. Fine, I'll do it then. But I won't like it. Okay, well, I still don't know what, uh, Juror 6 is state. No, no! God! Why is there not, not a speed up option? Gotta play all these pesky animations. I mean, I'm sure this is new dialogue because we're getting a new statement. But, like, we know what to do. It was just right here like that. Or maybe we do need to do this. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Because then it'd be like, oh, that's exactly where... <laughs> because if we had compared it before, it would probably be like, well, you don't know where on Mearsham Street, whatever. Means the road work was still going on when Miss Green was attacked at around five o'clock. Road works on Mearsham Street, huh? Okay, so we're gonna pit ya. Huh. Objection. It's quite a conundrum. Those two statements are clearly at odds with one another. At odds, Council, explain yourself. Please don't point! It wasn't me, I swear! Uh, what? I just want to get this done and dusted. Well, juror number three? Oh, me, sir? What? What do you mean? Juror number five's wor words just now are extremely significant. Let's take a moment to consider the implication of what's been said on our, on our map of the local area. You guys are fucking idiots. <laughs> on the day in question, Mr. Natsume visited his book this bookshop to purchase a number of secondhand books. And on the same day... We now know that there were works being carried out in Mearsham Street, making it impassable. Which means the defendant's route home could could not have taken him along Mearsham Street and down Briar Road. Oh! Yeah! Well, yeah, I guess you can't argue with that. Must have had a good two yards or more of the pavement up. Every gentleman and gentlewoman that came along had to turn back and go the other way. So, the only conclusion is this. The defendant must have taken the longer route back to those lodgings. It's not even that much longer. It feels like it's the same length. Whatever. I suppose he must have. I suppose that must be right, eh? Juror number three, you said the following. The man wouldn't have gone around the horse, the houses on his way back to the, from the bookshop. But, we now see that he had no choice. Yeah! Okay. My lord, Mr. Judge, sir, if I may. I, I don't think in all good conscience that I can say the man's guilty now. I changed my vote. What you? What about you, sir? Well, uh... I suppose since I was working on the road, I probably would have seen him had he gone by that way. So, I mean, like, um, uh, there's a hole in the prosecution statement that should be filled in, I say. <laughs> Anyone else want to change their, uh, their votes? Well done, Mr. Naruto. That was wonderful. Okay, first I want to do something to you. Do you want to fill in some holes? You can tell them well, some of my holes. Well, we've managed to change a couple of minds at least. We've it strengthened our our position somewhat. Yes, and it will prompt the other members of the jury to reconsider their stance as well. They'll be asking themselves if their current leanings are really the right or not. Now, if only if I could just de identify, identify one more clue or discrepancy that would make them stop doubting Mr. Natsume, we might be able to tip the balance completely. Did any of them say, like, it's gotta be the woman? Because that, I, like, juror number six for sure is what we need to point mm -hmm. to. 
We have to prevent by whatever means we have at our disposal. I'm stealing time out over here. <laughs> Thank you, Council. On with the summation examination, please. I actually have nothing else to say, Your Honor. You're just gonna give up? No. Hey, right, well, hmm, that makes it easy. Objection. This should be fine. Hello? What are you talking about, Council? Well, juror number two, juror number six. My, whatever do you mean, sir? Blah, 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 blah. I think perhaps the old man didn't hear you. Unbelievable. It's not like it was loud or anything. There's at least one fact of which we can be sure here. The bookshop receipt found in the defendant's room clearly indicates that on the day of the attack, he had been to your books and purchased a number of secondhand titles. He then returned home on foot. But the man says he has no rec recollection of his return journey. That's correct, except for the man, except for somebody in, in a green coat falling, slipping and falling. But what he does remember is seeing someone appear in front of him on the way. Someone in a green overcoat who suddenly collapsed on the pavement before his eyes. Yes, we are all aware of this. You poor young woman who was stabbed, obviously. I'm a southern bale now. Can we really be sure of that, madam? Ma, whatever do you mean? I'm sure you heard juror number six accounts of what account uh, what happened to him that day. Nah, I'm wearing soundproof headphones. She pulls them out. There's playing death metal music. <laughs> that same afternoon, there was somebody else apart from the victim, who was wearing a green overcoat and who fell over on the icy streets of the neighborhood. What the fucking coincidence? Oh my. Ah. Ah, oh, goodness, you, you mean. That's right. It's seriously, what a coincidence that juror number six was chosen. If he wasn't here in court, we would never have gotten to the bottom of this. What are the fucking odds? Are you really suggesting that the person in the green overcoat whom the defendant saw collapse in front of his eyes was the jolly old gentleman at the end of the bench with me here, here with me here today? That is entirely possible, yes. After all, the old man has a somewhat similar build to the victim. Well, look at that! Oh, goodness me! Mm, sorry, you need to pee! And crucially, we know precisely where the old man in the green overcoat fell. On Calabash Road. Therefore, if the person who Mr. Natsume saw collapsing in front of him was in fact juror number six, it means the defendant must have taken the long route back to his lodgings. And if that's true, then clearly... The crime scene on Briar Road where the woman was stabbed was not on his way home! Oh my! You idiot! Old man, if you hadn't been so daft as to be rolling about there, we would have boxed this off hours ago. And really, what were you thinking? Why have such a befuddling coat? What'd you say to me? Is it a crime for the elderly to walk on the streets these days, hmm? Is it a crime to slip on the ice? No, but you should probably go to the doctor. Yeah. Is it a crime to keep up with the latest styles and wear a beautiful green overcoat, is it? Well, I'm convinced. My lord, I do hope it won't cause any inconvenience, but I'd like to go back home to my farm on the southern plains of Alabama and fuck my cousin or something. I don't know what they do down there. I do declare that I would. Thank you. I would too like to go to Alabama. What? Is it a crime to change your mind, is it? Well... Also not guilty. Alright, well that was pretty easy. I guess it was probably faster because we didn't have to go to the tutorial or not, whatnot. The eyes too, the nose four. So the nose have it. Not guilty they say. Which means we no longer have a consensus among the members of a jury. Trial will continue. Objection. Oh my god, I fucking hate it here. I'm out of timeout and I'm already bitching. 
and no. I broke another glass. No, that was my. No, I only have seven glasses left. I'm keeping track. I had twelve to start with. I've broken five over the course of this game. Could it seem churlish of me to drink? <laughs> God, I remember one of the streamers I was following with. They just did the uh, the third case. <laughs> they were like, "If it, if the exposed bottom of mine." <laughs> no, how do they how do they put it? <laughs> if, if a peachy turd onto the my my lord's desk should. Oh God, his fucking way of speaking. I can't remember. Should something about him? Whatever. I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> Only to crush it in disgust. Pray forgive the discourtesy. Lord Van Zeeks, you didn't waste any time. It seems I must retract my earlier remark. What do you mean? I mistakenly credited these jurors with intelligence by describing them as insightful. Yet we have just witnessed them falling for a cheap trick if performed by an Eastern entertainer. Er? Whatever do you mean? I haven't tricked anyone. Everything I've said is the truth, I think. Indeed. Stalwart juror number five was undoubtedly repairing the road, as he claims. I believe you said it was a good two yards of the pavement which you have excavated, sir. That's right, it took me the whole day and they paid me a measly tuppence for it. A tuppence indeed. Now, my learned Nipponese friend, tell me, do you have any notion of the distance that two yards represents? Uh, Two yards is a little less than two me. <laughs> yeah. Less than two meters? That's not much at all. In other words, a distance readily vaulted by anyone of moderate vigor. Oops. Would you not agree, my stalwart friend? Uh, me? Well, I can't say you're wrong, no. What? Did you by chance erect a sign to prevent pedestrians from passing the site of your works? I wouldn't dream of it. What of we- What? You didn't put up a sign? Being like... And how the hell did you know this, Mr. Oh, uh... no. No coaches would have had hope of passing anyway, and we just turn in gentlefolk back when they come. Dude! Kids just jump right over us all the time! What?! The accused is no gentleman as so far as I can see. I have little doubt, however, he could spring over a two-yard trench in his meanderings around town. Actually, I call bullshit on that. Two yard... If you're claiming he could jump two yards, I was like, wait a second. Because, like, if, if the if the argument they make is two yards wide, they'd be like, oh, yeah, he could have gone around. But if their argument is that he could jump two yards, like... Wait, didn't, didn't he have an injury? I'm thinking... I can't remember... He had his books with him, so why would he jump? He had a lot of books. Nah, Vin Zeke's already covered this early in the trial, I remember. He had he had like three books and and oh. he, he he claimed that he would have had e he would have easily been able to hold a knife in the other hand. Ah is that true, is it? In inconsolable truth is that the books just purchased by the accused were found at the scene. There can be no doubt on his way back to his lodging, Mr. Dude. Ah. Oh, shit. And old man. Old man, you can talk. You say that at around five o'clock on the day in question you slip and fell on Calabash Road. Pray, was there a suspicious looking nipple knees behind you at the time? Oh, I, um, I can't say as I remember. You don't remember? 
How about the wager, my learned friend? You say it was this old man that the accused saw. I would lay a thousand to one against you being able to prove it. Ah, shit, he got me. Order, order, Lord Vanjix, explain yourself. I am an asshole. I, I am a big old stinky butthole, my lord. You had such a trenchant argument up your sleeve, why in the world did you not proffer it during the summation examination? Dude. Is everyone in this game a fucking moron? I wanted to give this young foreign student the sightseeing experience he not that came for. I wanted him to see for himself. How the opinion of the jury is so readily swayed. Look at them, they're about to change their votes again. But my hospitality has its limits, and they have been reached, I feel. Goodbye, Cloak. So, my learned friend, today's sightseeing tour of London is now over. What? What are you talking about? My lord. The prosecution requests permission to call its next witnesses to the stand. You had more witnesses? What? Granted, Bailey, bring forth the witnesses. It's, it's next witnesses. Mr. Naruto, do you not remember? We've been told on several occasions that we're eyewitnesses to the incident. One of them being a Scotland. Scotland. Oh, yeah, we haven't even gotten to the fucking witnesses. Yeah, we haven't even gotten to the witnesses. Oh, after we're done with this, can you. Sure. I'm kind of hungry, though. Uh... I'm gonna just about to say it's dressed. Can I make uh, a. <gasps> oh, yeah, 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 let's do that. I think I only have one box, though. Hmm. Can we combine it with anything else? I don't think so. Like with ramen noodles? That probably would taste nasty. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> Let's see. I mean, I've never tried it before. Ramen and hot dogs. Those are... The camera's still panning into my face. Or no, I think it's stopped now. No matter who Van Zeeks brings to the stand as his witnesses, no matter what they say, I will give them a blowjob to convince them, them not, to, <laughs> not to say anything incriminating. I believe in sasaki san I know he's innocent. And I'll keep believing to the very end, until this battle is over. Oh, those are some interesting characters. Witnesses, please state your names and occupations for the court. Oh, I love that dress so much. Wait, when did we see her the other day? Oh. Aw, they're dating! Oh god. Um. Constable, roll, roll! Why is that in your mouth? Because he's bad at his job. Constable Rolly Beat, sir! Nothing to report on the street, sir! Where am I? Ah, uh, uh, Mrs. Beat. Patricia's my name. I'm proud to say I'm this young town hero's wife. I like them. They're so cute. Um, what's the story here? Well, in truth, we've not been married long. In fact, we celebrated our first anniversary the other day. Ha, I got you beat. We just celebrated our second anniversary the other week. No, no, it was your husband I'm asking about. He seems tired. Hardly surprising. Whilst being an honorable occupation, patrolling the beat is most demanding work is the is the most demanding work in the world. Are you okay? Okay. Oh really? I'm sure I've heard that before, actually. Indeed, apart from Rambo's off, our gallant officers trudge some 20 miles a day. So that was going to come up again. Interesting. They patrol boarding houses and pubs, collect taxes, taxes, survey the streets, check that meters are reading true. 
And they're responsible for keeping the streets clean and lightning and extinguishing our street lights. Love you. There are a number of items on that list that don't sound much like poop. Yeah. I thought I put one in my I would just be falling asleep on my feet. I have collapsed long ago. But it goes without seeing that a policeman's primary duty is the apprehension of criminals. Even when he's off duty, a constable is expected to investigate and resolve any crimes on his beat. For the London Bobby is a man of honor. I said a man of honor! And a man of slumber. On the day in question, this man and his wife were walking down Briar Road in the opposite direction, and they witnessed the incident as it had occurred. Is that not correct, Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Beat? That's right, sir. Isn't it, Rolly? Oh. Constable Roller Bates, sir! Uh, another report on the streets, sir! Uh. What a great witness he's going to be. Very good. I'd like to hear your formal testimonies now, please, if you will tell the court exactly what you saw in the afternoon of the incident. Yes, sir! Uh. After a quick na nap. It was our wedding anniversary, and Rowley was taking me out for a mail. There was no time to change after work. He's just chewing on it. Look at him go. Jeez. Anyway, two silhouettes appeared out of the fog on the pavement in front of us. All of a sudden, one of them just collapsed on the floor, then the other scattered something before running off. We ran straight over, of course, and they went for help at a nearby police box. Why would I do that if I got a policeman next to me? It was definitely that Japanese man and the dog. Rolly and I both saw him clear as day. They're wearing the same scarf. They're so cute! <laughs> well, this is an extremely compelling testimony, I must say. Let's see you poke holes in this one, Mr. Swiss Cheese Man. Oh dear, this policeman and his wife are claiming to have positively identified Mr. Natsume at the scene. If their testimony is true, then the alternative course of actions that you established in the summation examination will be quashed. It's death nail, in fact. Because that alternative was never viable in the first place. What an unfortunate pachanting. On your wedding anniversary, too. Oh, I know, but I still managed to go out for the evening with my man. I thank the Lord for that. Thank me? Why? Gosh, the life of a London Bobby sounds very ha hard indeed. Indeed, however, she made it even harder, but um, tis. This cross-examination will be over in minutes. You may well have time to rest this afternoon. What do you mean by that? My learned friend, the witnesses saw the face of a man fleeing the scene. And it was your defendant, the testifying under oath that it was without a doubt the accused, Mr. Soseki Natsume. And one of these witnesses is a policeman, no less, so you appreciate the gravity of the situation, I'm sure. Except that the man's so tired his wife has to do all the talking. In our preamble, counsel for the defense, commence the cross-examination, please. Yes, my lord. What the witness is All right, just press everything, I guess. I've got nothing. Because we never figured out, I can't remember if this came up. Where did the books come from? Were these Soseki's books or were these her books? All right, I'm just gonna press everything. Hold it. Uh, I am going to turn up the heat though, because it is really cold in here. Getting 
be October. It, it was so warm so, this September, and then we got back from vacation just in time for October to turn up the chill. Oh yeah, that's probably gonna come out. Come back on recording, isn't it? Shit. <sighs> okay, I'll turn it back off. I'll just wrap myself up in a blanket, actually. Come on, connect please. Please tell me she didn't leave her phone here. It says active now. Oh shit. Kristen, we're not going to be able to make mac and cheese if you don't bring milk. No time, time to change after work, you say. Are you also a member of the police, Be Miss Beat? Oh no, sadly not. It's a job for scrap strapping young men only. Women, children, and the elderly can't even apply. Well, I think you can probably see why children and the elderly can't do the job, can you? I think Broly looks over so handsome in his uniform. It suits you down to the ground, doesn't it, darling? finished driving, I'm sure. Hmm, what? Aha! Uh -huh. Just finished my beat. He now we're headed back to the station. I was actually planning on getting changed there. Is he talking in his sleep? This is creepy. Oh no, Rowlet. I much prefer you in uniform. Sometimes I don't recognize you when I see you in plain clothes. Oh dear, that doesn't seem healthy. Kindly adhere to the port. You were going for a meal after you finished your beat for the day, correct? 
That's right, so yes, uh, although I was fit to drive, to be honest, after spending the whole day on my feet. But believe it, but at least it is my life, so I'm, as long as I'm the proud owner of this, I'll serve my city and my queen to the end. Uh, what's that now? My wall card, sir. Poof, that I'm a London copper. It has the noble founding principles of the force written on it as a reminder all of us policemen as our sworn duty. To patrol the streets of London town and uphold the peace of the cover man. Sir, and for such a noble cause, I cover 20 miles every single day without fail and without a grumble. Because I know that the plot in my boots is all Londoners need to hear to feel safe and comfortable. Safe and, safe and secure. So finding crime doesn't appear to come into it then. But sir, just on that one particular day, I was looking forward to celebrating my wedding anniversary. Thank you. Mrs. B puts up with a lot being married to a bobby like me. I wanted to show my dear wife how much I care. Oh my god. They're so cute. <laughs> Oh, pay. Oh, Rowley! Oh, what a charming couple. Their young love is such a joy to behold. If a little over the top, perhaps. And then, kind of describe what happened next. Hold it! God, that was only the first statement. Two silhouettes. That's right. They were coming towards us, walking up Briar Road in the opposite direction. There was a rather plump figure followed by a scrawny, thin-looking man. And it does sound exactly like the victim as pictured in this print, and like Mr. Natsume. Yes, unfortunately it does. And you're certain that at that time there was nobody else nearby? Oh yes, quite certain. It was dark, but there were street light There are streetlights on Briar Road, you see. And there was nobody else around at all. Isn't that right, my darling? Mm -hmm. Well, oh yes, that's right. Of course, there was a light fog on the ground. But Briar Road is dead straight. You can see a fairly long way down the pavement. And then there's the street lighting as well. I didn't see any other pedestrians. If our takes a firm hold, your answer please, Mr. Beat. Are you quite sure of what you've just said? Yes, I have the copper who spends all day every... every... All day, every day, keep watch on the streets, I'd swear to it, sir. I'm sure, as my love for Patricia is true. Oh, Pat. Oh, Rowley. Still maintaining there was no one else around other than the victim of the attacker. It's starting to seem like that must be how it really happened. It's you seem like there's nowhere to run. Well, that didn't stop Mr. Natsume, did it? He fled the scene all too convincingly. Thank you. I believe we have a recently clear idea of the situation just before the incident now. What happened in the crucial moments that followed? All of a sudden, the just collapsed on the floor. Hold it! Right. You, you seem like you want to give me something. You didn't get the right call, did you? Mm -hmm. Do you need milk for those? Because no. we don't have any milk. Okay. No, you should just have the two pack inside. Okay. You just got the one? Hmm? You just got the one? I mean, I'm two. Oh. I, I just thought you probably would want more for extras. You didn't miss much. I was trying to get you, trying to call you most of the time. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I could no, They're just cute. I, I these, buy these, these, just the yeah. these two are heckin' cute. Look at this picture. They're cute. <laughs> they're cute. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's usually how this goes, right? Yeah, pretty much. What is this? Oh. 
Are we going to find out that they're the one that killed the woman? <laughs> Irrefutable proof here in this courtroom and heard of. Nice. Oh, well, I couldn't make out what it was at the time. But when we got closer, we realized what it was. Didn't we, darling? Mm hmm, well, oh yeah, that's right. That was some old books. I, I see, old books. Yeah, sir, the culprit had dropped a number of them all around where the victim lay on the pavement. Indeed, that's clearly pictured in this photographic print. We're gonna find out those aren't the books he actually had. Or if there were like more I'm than one. I'm still copy. like confused because it wasn't a killing. So I wonder if like the victim has something to do with this that we need to talk about. That rotten Japanese man did what he did. He did that when he did the day. So he dropped his own books. Let's not forget that it remains to be established that the defendant was indeed the attacker. We saw him. He was the man on the dock without question, Sal. Mustache, the hunchback, the cat like eyes, the top mouth, the stub nose. You sure I didn't see the cat? Any more insults you want to throw in? That's right. He looked down on the poor defenseless one with those terrifying, intense eyes. God, your pupils are stars. And he suddenly threw his books onto the pavement and ran away. Uh, I see. This is tough. They seem as though they're telling the truth here. May I remind the court that this unambiguous testimony comes from a policeman and his wife. Now please continue. As a policeman, I've never done anything. At the time of this game, yeah? Well, in-universe, at least. I don't know. Hey! That was mine! Hold it! Come here! That was mine! Was it your husband who went to fetch, went to fetch help? No, no, I went. I may not be a police officer myself, but I am a proud wife of one after all. Isn't that right, my darling? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That's right, honey. I asked Mrs. B to go. I was off duty by that point, but a bob is never truly off duty. Of course, I felt obliged to say and got the same. Very laudable, Mr. Beat. Preserving the seat of a crime is a task of considerable importance. That's why I sent Patricia, you see. I told her where to find the right police box. Forgive my ignorance. What do you mean exactly by the right police, police box? Depends on the crime's location, you see, as to who deals with it. Where the woman was stabbed wasn't actually on my beat. So I told Patricia. So I told Patricia the way to the police box for the right, for the beat. The incident fell under, so she could go and report it. I ran there as quickly as I could and asked for help from the Bobby on duty. There's nothing more potent than a young couple in love working together, you know. And thanks to your swift response, the case was quickly resolved. The actions of two model citizens. Oh, please, you're making us blush, isn't it, darling? Yeah, sir, what Patricia said, sir. Let's move on, shall we? I'm getting nothing from these two. Hold it! This is probably one of those ones where you just have to press everything. They really like doing that in this game. But surely you wouldn't have been able to see his face by the light of the gas street lamps, would you? We absolutely could. Us Londoners have exceptional eyesight, I'll have you know. Kristen. <laughs> right. 
The light from the street lamps is more than enough. My husband already told you that the fog was only light. Was o was only light, didn't he? Oh, the fog was light. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what of the fog? Oh, famous for it across the globe, I believe. But it's an absolute menace to those of us who have to live with it, of course. Oh, it is. It is. When it's thick, you can't even see the hand at the end of your own... Oh, so how do we see the, the face? Now, would you stop shaking your husband about? Constant fog makes our eyes very sharp, you see. That's why we can tell you for sure and certain it was what, what, that it was that little Japanese man we saw. Can't we, darling? Hmm, well, ah, uh, yes, it was accusing man, and no mistake. The mustache, the hunchback, the cat like eyes, the top mouth, the snub nose. Unmistakable, sir. Huh? As far as this couple's testimony is concerned, there can't be any question. It was Suzuki saw my saw running away from the scene of the crime. So that's it then. That's their entire entire testimony. What do you think, Mr. Naruto? Well, I hate to admit it, but on hearing the testimony, it really does seem as though Mr. and Mrs. B saw what they really saw. Mr. Natsume running away from the scene on Briar Road that day. Yes, I feel the same. So, if that's true, where does it leave us? Did you salt the water? Hmm? Did yeah. you salt the water? Yes, I did. Salt. You, uh, you said yes in the middle of my second asking. It's okay. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm gonna need some oil. Okay. Oh no! What should we do? If Kazuma Sama were here. Why are you trying to say? I think you would try to find a contradiction. Shut up! I know that's what I need to do! It's case four! Um, Mr. Lawyer, sir, can I ask you something? Can we play seven minutes in heaven real quick? Well, you keep asking us all these questions about everything we told you so. Seems like you don't believe our testimony. <laughs> Is that right? Is it? Well, out with it. Don't make my hubby beat you up. What? No, no, no. Oh, no, it's really not that at all. My hub is a policeman, remember? And I know what I saw. I remember every last detail, everything, like, like, oh, I know. What about the books the man dropped? I could tell you the names of every single one I could. That actually would be very helpful. Please do, please, 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 please. No, I won't do it all, fuck. That Lord Joe, that. That Japanese lawyer has no idea what I'm capable of. Even if I decide to forgive him for insulting us, I don't think for a minute, don't think for a minute that Rolly will. I really didn't mean to cause offense. Please put your husband's fist down. There will be no first cups in the courtroom, ma'am. Perhaps you would like the opportunity to supplement your testimony, Mrs. Beat. Might that appease you? It might. I love the one last jab before she puts him down. <laughs> like, that's so fucking good. Thank you, my lord. That would settle things nicely. Wouldn't it, darling? He says yes. Well, four book. Wait a second. purchased by the accused at the nearby second-hand bookshop on the day in question. After I had been to the police box for help, I, well, I decided to have a good look over the area for good measure. I'm a proud policeman's wife, after all, I did for Rowley. 
What was your husband doing at the time? Sleeping. He was lying face down in the snow, getting some well-deserved rest. He works ever so, so hard, you know, ever so hard, don't you, my darling? I want to say that while he was sleeping, someone, and while she was getting help, someone probably ran up and stuck a knife in her, in the woman, or something. <laughs> or dropped the books, like, shit, I forgot the books. Yeah, I don't know. Well, Mrs. Beach, seeing as you've regaled the court with the tales of your powers of recollection, would you be so kind as to recount the titles of the books you observed at the scene? I'd be happy to, now y'all listening. There was the picture of Monzi or somebody or other, and what's its yearnings? Okay. Good, good. Then there was, um, a meal for somebody. And the last one was definitely the thing, thing gum or something. Well, a meal for somebody. The, the, or sorry, the thing gummies something. You see, my powers of recollection are not to be messed with. Yeah, I see there are one or two holes in your memory. Oh, well, they were along those lines, I'm quite sure. There were indeed books found at the scenes with titles along those lines, as you put it. Well, what did I tell you? So I think it's very mean the way you've been implying that my testimony can't be trusted. Don't you agree, darling? Oh my, oh my god. Anyone who upsets my Patricia will have to answer to you. This bad boy. Answer my name. Terrifying. Yes, yeah, she really is. So that's it then. Oh, yeah, yep, 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 I got it. We lit we already got this. Why? Why are you replaying it? In case you didn't get it. We had to have gotten it! I can barely hear the music, so if I get a wrong answer, I won't even be able to tell right away. So you're saying that there were four books? That's right, I remember all of them. The picture of Monzi or somebody, what's the yearnings, a meal for someone, and thing gummies something. I'm sorry, Mrs. Beat. But there is a fundamental flaw in that statement of yours. Oh no, what? Whatever could you mean? Simply that, at the scene of the crime, there were only three books, not four. What? This is the receipt from the bookshop where the defendant bought his books. Your books? Yes, and it details, it details Mr. Natsume's purchases that day. But as you can see, only three books are listed. Maybe he stole one. Oh no, no, that can't be. I remember seeing them. There were four books, I tell you. Four dirty old books. Well, they weren't dirty because they were just brand new. I think. Uh, I think your books was... That doesn't... Oh, it's a second-hand bookshop. Yeah, so they'd be used. Uh, I retract my previous statement. Have a good look at this proto... Photo... Papapapada. Print of the scene of the crime. As you can clearly see from this evidence as well, there are only three books. But I just don't believe it. I saw them there, I swear I saw them. No, madam, I'm afraid your powers of observation cannot be relied upon. Grrr. 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 So it cannot be denied. Keep the uh, primal play to the bedroom, ma'am. 
that though you say it was a defense you saw, you could very well be mistaken. Oh no! Oh no, 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 no! Objection! Officers, why? Okay, so you gotta say uh, there was a picture, there's a new side, and it has another one. It's plainly evident. That it is your powers of deduction that cannot be relied upon, my learned Nipponese friend. What? What cannot be denied is that these two witnesses saw the accused running from the scene. A fact that you know very well you have no hope of disproving. Ah! So you've striven to avert attention from that by dint of in some inconsequential discrepancies. Would that be fair? No, oh, I see it's right through me. But your plan has somewhat recoiled against you. What are you talking about? It's quite simple. Let me explain with a toast. To the policeman's wife and her entirely accurate testimony in every respect. Oh! You see, the matter is not up for debate. At the scene on Briar Road, a total of four books were most definitely found. That's bullshit. What about the photographic print? It only shows three books! Quite right. Only three can be seen. In that print? That print? Oh, you mean to say... Fuck! Now I only have six. Allow me to present another, one that shows the victim's hand. I've got to hand it to you. That's not even the same book, you moron! The what? The Lion's Pride. There's still a discrepancy, though. And is that one burnt? Oh. Yeah, it must have come from the bookshelf. Because they were, yeah, the burnt bookshelf. Mm -hmm. The fourth book was hidden from view in the original plant by the victim's torso. No! No! Actually, I'm okay with this. Mm hold -hmm. on, hold on! There, you say, you say, look there, look, look, look! Yes, I'm looking. It's just like I said, isn't it, my darling? Well, here's the next thing. Uh, he only made that testimony because he didn't have all the, all the evidence. Yeah, I mean, like, nobody's probably faulting for us for it, except for Van Zeeks. <laughs> because Van Zeeks fucks, is fucking racist. And I just study the receipts for the books purchased by the accused on the day in question. Mrs. Beat, the titles once again, if you please. Oh, yes, of course. The pictures of Monzi or somebody other. The picture of Monzi or Lachach. What's the yearnings? Canterbury yearnings. A meal for someone. A meal for Garbado. In fact, as the court has just heard, the witness remembers the book's titles flawlessly, save for a few minor details. Mrs. Beat's powers of recollection can only be described as exceptional. Did you hear that, Rowley? Gentleman paid me a compliment. Yes, sir. Flaw flowers are so Patricia is flawless. But there are only three books on the receipt. Mrs. Beat mentioned four. So? There's nothing surprising about that. Clearly the fourth book is that which is shown in this photographic print. I'm sorry, Counsel, but does that not seem odd? I do think it should be... S sounds odd. Because it wasn't his book, it was... It's not even, yeah, it's not even the one that she said. Not odd at all, my lord. As a photograph clearly shows, the fourth book was found in the victim's clutches. In other words, it belongs to the victim. Do you think... The victim bent down to pick up the book as it fell out the, the window, and another thing that fell out the window was the knife in her own back. Mm -hmm. Like, they were throwing shit out the window, right? 
<laughs> so what if what if she threw out the book? She, she saw the book get thrown down, went over to grab it, and then she as she was leaning over, a knife fell out. Because she threw the knife. Yeah, because because she was throwing shit out at her husband. Mm -hmm. I wonder what Maybe became what became of that fourth book. Obviously, it wasn't overlooked by the investigating officers at Scotland Yard. I have it here as evidence. Uh, submit that on the aforementioned of photographic print to the court, please. My pleasure, my lord. Lion's pride. Yeah, so we're probably gonna have to be like, hey, this isn't even the same book. The prosecution. So then, wait, what What did she see then? Because if... Oh, shit. Yeah, that raises a question. What's the fourth book she saw? Yeah, where did that go, and how did it get replaced with the Lion's Pride? No, I think my theory is wrong then. You seem surprised, my learned friend, but your resistance until now has been in vain. Entertaining, yes. But in vain. Uh, but your resistance until now has been... Yeah, yeah, I said that. The spurious Ilonga wrote to the accused lodging that you tried to establish in your summation examination in the attempted discrediting of the witness's power of recollection in your cross-examination. Futile. I walked right into this, didn't I? You see, everything was said is true. Isn't that right, my darling? Yes, Pat. Marry my Pat. So, perhaps the ladies and gentlemen of the jury would like to reconsider their positions, should the court waste any more time on this Nipponese travesty? Or is it the decision you've had to make all too apparent already? You have heard all the witnesses and seen all the evidence. This trial has run its course. Mr. Narahodo, I'm afraid we are in a terribly precarious position. I know, but if I fight back in the wrong way now, I could very well just make matters worse. Think, Rinosuke, think! What, 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 what do you do now? Save, obviously! Well, 
it appears the defense has no objection to this juncture, in which case... Mr. Nahuno, was it not clear? The case for the defense is in great danger. Oh, which is why I let the sweat drip from my trembling brow in silence. You're so right. I'm sorry. If I didn't say, any if I don't say anything now, it'll all be over. It won't end well for us. I can't Holy. let that happen. Wait, the defense. Objection. I was just go waiting for that. The defense will have to wait. Because that sapless hesitation cannot go on punch. Fuck me! Objection! I'm not done yet. No, my learned friend, you are done. My last cross-examination was your final chance to establish a credible defense, and you failed. Die has been cast. There's no more room for debate. Well, it might be over as far as you're concerned, but... But... I have but... I can't think of what to say. You want me to help? If I may, Lord Ben Seeks. It seems so, somewhat boorish to close down the debate at this point. Hmm. Your insignificant little Eastern Isle must be a lawless hole indeed. Je Jesus fucking Christ, dude. What did he say? Oh. I don't know. 
He said, your insignificant little eastern isle must be a lawless hole indeed. A lonely judicial assistant to have the audacity to intervene at a moment like this. Oh! Wow! I am, to my shame, still a very inexperienced lawyer. So you will have to forgive me, but I consider my assistant's advice essential and her opinions invaluable. Mr. Naruhudo. Hmm. Well, I've had enough racism for today. One of this land's great guiding principles is tolerance, so this court will hear you, madam. Go ahead, Mrs. Sato, please. Very well. Ray, what insight can you give us? What have we all overlooked in this matter that you all see fit to pursue if you fair there? Well, the court has been presented with new evidence, but only after that last cross-examination finished. I see. You believe that this new evidence warrants further examination, do you? Um, Mr. Naruto, what do you think? It's just possible that this new evidence might be the decisive proof we've been waiting for. The judge was sure to ask the members of the jury to announce their leanings in a moment. You're of course right. She's always right. Yeah. She's probably the best assistant you ever get in this series. She actually knows how to do her fucking job. She's best girl. Yeah, honestly, I feel like I feel like three is the only one that even comes close because three actually features Mia, the only person that knows how to do their job. The fact that the matter is that she she dies in the second case of the first game, so you just like never get her. Like mm -hmm. she she pops in from beyond the grave just to be like, hey, I'm gonna help you out here. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do your job for you because you're a shit. You're a naive lawyer, Phoenix. Mm-hmm. I think six kind of has that as well. Like everyone's a little bit more competent in that game. But like, yeah. Overall I think, consistency. This is the best. Yeah, the Suzato's definitely the most consistent and the most efficient assistant. I don't even really consider Mia a proper judicial assistant because she literally only shows up to help you out in dire circumstances. Very well, the defense may present one for the piece of evidence. Evidence that apparently offers profound insight into the case in case it too has been overlooked. Um, so not this one. Well, actually... Is it burnt? Look, look oh at the God. book. See if it's burnt. It looks... Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. Can I... Yes. Okay, yeah, it's really burnt. Oh, look at this. The book has been badly burnt. You're right. You'd never be able to read it on this in this state, especially not the latter pages. What a terrible waste. Judging from the scorched edges of the paper, I think the damage must have occurred very recently. Hmm, a book? Recently damaged by fire. Why does that seem to raise a red flag with me? Oh, there we go. Let me see. It's a book entitled The Lion's Pride. I'm afraid I don't know any English literature at all, so it wouldn't be something I've heard. Wait a minute. The Lion's Pride? That's strange. I think I, I have heard a book by that name before. And very recently, too. It's a title I recognize, too, Mr. Nahudo. Wait, did we get that title somewhere? Yeah, you said uh, it was during uh, the fight. I don't know that at all. The evidence in question is what we can see from the newly presented photographic print of the crime scene. The fourth book found in the victim's hand. Oh my god. We have already discussed the fourth book at length. Other than it being in the victim's grasp at the time of the incident, no significance has been attached to it. Pursuing the matter further would be a flagrant waste of the court's time, as you well know. Hmm, yes, I'm afraid, counsel, I must ensure... What the fuck? Did I do it wrong? 
I had a 50-50 chance. Wait, 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 what'd you say? Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Another you know, court believed that uh, the evidence in question contained a hitherto undiscovered clue. So I'm asked to ask you to elaborate. Do I make myself clear? Well, okay, thank you for clearing that up. I believe the prosecution is trying to avoid a thorough examination of the evidence. Well, I've already done it, so. Na 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 boo boo. So, Council, precisely where is the vital clue to this case which is for, what the fourth book contains? I don't know. Where could it possibly be? I would like to ask the court to observe the back of the book in question. Is it done? Almost. Almost. Oh, good gracious! It's been brought to a priest! Just like Mama's fish and chips, am I right? So we just have to ask ourselves, why was the victim clutching what is clearly an unreadable book? It is undeniably an extremely unnatural thing for her to have been doing. They are connected! That's so cute! Unnatural, you say? And what of it, my Nipponese friend? You don't know the British tradition of reading burned books? Were I to concede the point, it bears no relation to the case where there is nothing to discuss. Should you wish to assert that this fire damage is of some veiled clue as to what happened that day? Pray do enlighten us all. What truth does this shard book hide? A shard book. Can you pronounce it that can you pronounce it that way? Is it just chard or can you say ch shard? I'm gonna I I think I'm gonna I keep saying shard. That sounds really cool. I do have to say one thing. I like yeah. your theory, but there's gonna be some sort of twist. I think your theory's right, yeah, we're there's still, gonna be some sort of twist. We're like, still pretty early in this case, mm -hmm. it seems like. Like, because she was found on the opposite side of the street from their house. Yeah. She was moved. Maybe. Case 3-3 three, three still haunts me. What do you suggest that you can ascertain from the fire damage this sorry, sorry tome has suffered? Its owner! My lord, the burn on the back of this book reveals a startling truth. About the book's owner. I beg your pardon? But we already know who the book belongs to. The victim was gripping it in her hand as she fell to the floor after all. It's obviously hers. That's not true at all. The question of how this book came to be in the victim's hand is yet to be answered. However, as to the question of questions of who the book really belongs to and where it originated, the defense has very credible answers. Good gracious, how could you possibly? <sighs> very well, I'll play along with this futile attempt to delay your inevitable demise. But do remember, the members of the jury very merry will burn you if your little gamble goes awry. Counsel, defense's response here is very likely to influence the uh, final outcome of the trial. So tell the court, who do you claim is the owner of this burned book? It's Mr. Garadab. That's incorrect. It was actually Mrs. Garadab. It was Herlock Sholmes. The answer is that this book belongs to a couple who own the house where the defendant has his lodgings. A certain Mrs. M or Mr. and Mrs. Garadeb. The landlords! And whether this is some extraordinary coincidence or some kind of fate at work, I don't know, but... Of all the people in London, one of the six chosen for jury duty in this courtroom today is none other than Mrs. Garadeb herself. Hello? Oh my goodness me! No, the other one. I think you must be mistaken, sir. I'm, I'm, I'm not Mr. Garadab's wife. I'm his maid. Things would be so much easier if you would just drop the pretense. Alright then, how about a simple question for you? 
Have you ever seen this book in Mr. Garadeb's house? Uh, I would never presume to know all the books he keeps, sir. Objection. There you have it. This is outlandish behavior. This woman is the accused landlady, you say? You implicate this hardworking member of the public. You, dis you besmirch her without a shred of evidence. I point at you, sir. Your actions are unforgivable. No, sir. This is not mere conjecture. The defense happens to know that on the day in question, at almost exactly the same time as the victim, was stabbed on the pavement below. Another incident was taking place in the room on the top floor of Mr. and Mrs. Garadeb's house. Good lord, a murder, my, my counsel? A fire, my lord. Trying to say it was, happened in the blink of an eye, you know. The whole place filled with smoke, couldn't see a bally thing. Didn't take long for the fire to spread, of course. The bally furniture started going up as well. Worst of it is, I lost my favorite a book called The Lion's Pride. The Lion's Pride! That man has an interesting voice. But of the very same title that's the subject of this debate. Oh dear me! This is risable. Risable. What the fuck? I have told the court is that a book by the same name was involved in a fire, in which case it would be reasonable to assume that it was burned to ashes. Well, it was just a coincidence. It is unreasonable to infer that it magically removed itself to the scene of the crime. I mean, it was on the street, my dude. Perhaps it would make more sense if I told you that the cause of the fire error was marital discord. Without going into details, it appears that Mrs. Garadev was consider considerably enraged. Apparently, she continued to attack Mr. Garadev even amid the flames. Oh, how awful! I can't even be- imagine being so hard to the one you love. Can you, Rolly? Absolutely not, sir. My Patricia would never raise a finger against me, sir. Ah, shit. They're gonna be the one to make her say, like, uh, well, accuse herself that she is his wife. They're so lovey dovey. Alright. Okay. <sighs> Yeah, she would have been throwing incendiary books. But this guy says I am suggesting that the book was thrown through a window and landed coincidentally at the scene of the crime. What the fuck? No, a thorough investigation of the surrounding area was conducted the very evening of the incidents and there's no report of the Gerdub's window pane being broken. It's quite true. We also saw no sign of broken glass when we visited the Garadeb household. But it is not conceivable that the window was open at the time and... Not even remotely. Let us not forget the season and the chilling weather that accompanies it, you idiot. No it lavender... Open before throwing out the book? Yeah, because the fire... Because of the fucking fire? The smoke... Does the... Smoke. the, the yeah, I don't know. Do you earnestly like, claim... Yeah. I do. Well, let's bring the man here in question. Like, understand that it's been three weeks for us. Mm -hmm. Like, we, we're still able to remember that uh, whole song and dance. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope that everyone can see for you what you are, you little foreign trickster. Why are you mad at us? Why are you mad at us? What did we do? Because we're accusing her of that our little tab set the whole neighborhood alight. Honestly, if 
Fine, I'm merely posing it was made for appearance's sake. How could you? It's nothing to do with a species of case, not in here, but all you've done is sell our family's name. No, I, I assure you, that was never my intention. Yeah, I don't know. Why did you smack him? She has a temper. Think about it. At the end of the day, the only person who could possibly have stabbed the victim is that little hunchback with the mustache. He ran away from the scene too. I do declare that you're right. It's true. Yes, what did I do? This isn't me. Uh, I'll try. What's that? God damn it. They don't even let me tell you. Man, I actually managed to finish a glass of wine. In truth, my lord, I feel these have been unnecessarily protracted proceedings. But then one must always exercise patience in order to savor the best vintage. No, wait! The mystery of the fourth book still hasn't been... What? Lick my boot. <laughs> Lick my boot, my young Nipponese. Uh, I think we're good. To just Let's just uh, hold off here, because I need to get going. Um, yeah, this is a good... Work, yeah, I need to go head to work. This will be a good pose to uh, come back to. I was hoping to get to a proper stopping point, but in lieu of that, let's uh, let's have that to come back to.